Am yes, I audible? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's begin our discussion. Uh, today we will uh, uh, quickly discuss about the Wildlife Protection Act. So I will start with the with the important provisions of this act, and then we will uh, discuss about the PYQs, and we will also discuss about the recent amendment act, uh, which was. Uh, um, which was carried out uh, last year in 2023 uh, and pros and cons of that amendment. Okay, Wildlife Protection Act, it was uh, enacted in nine, 1792 on the, back, <coughs> on the backdrop of uh, um, global attention towards the environmental issue. So we have, um, uh, uh, we have the main sig signatory of uh, sites, uh, convention of uh, international trade of uh, endangered uh, species so uh, at at this point of time in 1970s there were there was huge uh, uh, um, awareness movement which was carried out uh, in at global level regarding the environment and the conservation so the word conservation though it was very much limited to the elitist uh, arena uh, but it was catching the attention of the lawmakers in that regard india has uh, enacted this wildlife protection act of 1972 in uh, uh, in the basic act uh, when the even this uh, 1972 act was enacted so it established uh, some institutions and it uh, it also had some uh, uh, categorization of species for ensuring the uh, protection of those species and um, by um, um, by the, by the passage of time in 2000 there were many amendments like the main amendments i could say one was uh, in 2003 where the com concept of conservation reserve community reserve was added and then in 2006 uh, uh, tiger tiger conservation came into prominence and in 2003 national board for wildlife was also added and then the recent amendment so if we see just to summarize the provisions and we will see some some important details when we are dealing with the PYQs also. So if we see the important provisions, the the second chapter of the act talks about this uh, National Board for Wildlife. The chairman of uh, this board is <coughs> the Prime Minister of Prime Minister of India, ex officio chairman, and this um, talks about the roles and responsibilities of uh, National Board for Wildlife, which is a uh, uh, which uh, which is a high level body for the um foreseeing of the activities of the conservation and uh, if there is any activities like uh, bordering the um, altering the borders of a protect, protected area the permission of this uh, national board for wildlife is uh, mandatory and then uh, uh, chapter 3 talks about the hunting of wild animals it explicitly prohibits hunting of certain groups of animals but uh, it also provides a grant of permit for special purposes like uh, uh, for uh, research purpose and uh, and, and uh, when uh, when the different animals can be hunted or uh, in what circumstances can it be hunted uh, uh, for example if if uh, if if an animal is uh, listed in scheduled one then if it is dangerous to human life uh, or it is, or if it is disabled or uh, diseased beyond recovery and one more condition is that the chief wildlife warden should be satisfied that such animal cannot be captured or tranquilized or translocation as a last resort. That animal can be hunted, not uh, as the first choice. And in other schedules, if uh, 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 the restriction is not so stringent, like if, if it is dangerous to human property also, it can be hunted. Again, the uh, opinion of the chief wildlife warden comes into picture. Chief wildlife warden uh, is some is somebody who is a high level officer in the forest department of uh, every state. There will be principal chief conservator of forest PCCF or CCF. So they will be the chief wildlife warden. That means they are the protector of these animals. Then uh, in in the, in the third chapter, uh, the uh, chapter three A, there is a, he talks about the protection of specified plants and animal uh, not animals. This is specific to the plants. Uh, the licensing of the uh, of some plants and the cultivation of specific plants without license is prohibited this question was also asked in one of the pyqs so this is uh, the uh, this chapter talks about specifically about uh, how these plants is managed for the conservation purpose 
and then uh, the next chapter talks about the protected areas protected areas mainly the declaration of sanctuary declaration of national parks uh, uh, declaration of sanctuary is, is mainly done by the state government whereas the declaration of national parks they can they are they also mainly done by state government but state central government can also notify uh then the then the national parks have a more stringent control uh they have clearly nearly clearly defined boundaries no human interference is uh, allowed except by the national park administration and then there is organized core buffer principle in national parks and uh, boundaries cannot be altered without the approval of this national board on wildlife but uh, in uh, 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 in sanctuaries they are they are declared for the protecting propagating or developing wildlife for or its environment so uh, relatively it has less protection when when we compare to the national parks so this these are the different uh, different uh, main differences between uh, sanctuaries and uh, national parks and the details of how it is declared and uh, what uh, <laughs> activities are prohibited in sanctuaries and national parks they are listed here and then um, along with the declaration of national parks as i told in 2003 amendment uh, community reserves and conservation reserves are also est uh, established Con conservation reserves and community reserves what is the main criteria or basic purpose of these reserves is to establish a continuity between uh, continuity between the protected areas these reserves are established for uh, uh, the purpose of acting as buffer zones uh, or as connectors because most of the animals will be migratory animals so these reserves they kind of create kind of migration corridors between the national parks wildlife sanctuaries and also um and, now, and there cannot be clear boundaries between the protected areas right animals are free to uh, they should have free movement and uh, uh, the there should be some kind of contingency so <laughs> to ensure that extra protection these reserves are established they mainly differ community reserve and conservation reserve they mainly differ in terms of land ownership when it comes to conservation reserve the land is owned uh, is completely owned by government of india it is uninhabited land and completely owned by government of india uh, sometimes it could be used for subsistence purpose by communities but community reserves conservation reserves are owned by government of india community reserves they are owned by uh, community or sometimes it might be private lands also uh it it community reserves are more often uh, they are established in some villages where um people actually inhabit in those areas and they are also involved directly involved in the conservation activities with uh, uh collaboration with the forest department so some kind of community reserve committee will be created where uh, the representatives of forest department and also the community they will be uh, made part of that local uh, committee and a kind of joint forest management is carried out in these community reserves <coughs> so there will be some land use restrictions in conservation reserves also and in community reserves also uh, uh, for example in community reserves hunting is not allowed uh, uh, and uh, traditional agriculture practices are not allowed but some uh, activities like carrying out or uh, collection of minor forest produce uh, which are uh, protected by the forest rights act also so those kind of activities are allowed so these are the important points which we have to remember about this uh, conservation reserve and the community reserve and then there is a central zoo authority which um, uh, regulates the activities of zoo uh, there is a, 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 a constitution of this central, central zoo authority so each and every zoo which has been uh, in function in, in throughout the country it has to be it, it will be regulated by this zoo authority that has been given in this uh, section and then in 2006 what happened there was dwindling number of uh, tigers beyond uh, uh, beside uh, uh, executing this uh, project tiger in 2006 uh, in sarista tiger reserve there was uh, some kind of uh, um, speculation or some kind of rumors that there is no tiger left in sarista tiger reserve which is in rajasthan so uh, so when as part of uh, government got alerted in that regard and it Uh, uh constructed it, it constituted a committee which consists of ecologists uh, like sunat sunita narayan and many ecologists uh, naturalists and experts in this arena and as per the um, recommendation of that committee it recommended that 
uh, a high powered authority or committee or some kind of uh, body should be created which foresees this conservation activities and uh, tiger reserves so as per that recommendation national tiger conservation authority was created in 2006 so on in the auspices of this uh, ntca uh, the tiger reserves are established uh, or the tiger reserves conservation of tigers are are um, are foreseen or they are monitored by this uh, national tiger conservation authority and uh, regularly in the sense once in four years national tiger conservation authority in association with the uh, wildlife institute of india they carry out census okay so in 2002 in, uh, recently in 2002 also tiger census was carried out uh, according to that uh, more than 3600 tigers are found in, in india in uh, various tiger reserves Uh, so this is an important body when it comes to the upsc examination national tiger conservation authority and then wildlife crime control bureau is also there, <coughs> there which is a, uh, it is it works with the authorities like uh, uh, police department and forest department for controlling the crime in uh, in wildlife maybe the wildlife smuggling or uh, uh, it forces the trade and uh, international collaboration in this regard all these things are uh, uh, carried out by wildlife uh, crime control bureau and it it uh, recognizing its word gone uh, work government of india has also awarded many awards for this wildlife crime control bureau when it comes to the conservation of tortoises operation kurma and many such conservation activities uh, basically it uh, it, it uh, works for preventing the preventing and uh, uh, preventing the wildlife crime and then trade or commerce of in wildlife and animal articles and trophies and uh, um, certain activities uh, possession of uh, certain wildlife articles animal articles are prohibited so recently there was controversy in karnataka where a person had a, a nail of a tiger in his uh, necklace and he was subjected to arrest so in that regard uh, many people came to know that possessing these kind of articles are also um, offense in the in the eyes of law so this kind of things are uh, are dealt in this act and then regulation on international trade on in, in endangered uh, species of wildlife wild fauna and flora this is in uh, regard to the this is in line with the sites convention which uh, which came into force in 1963 sites convention so it is in line with what we have agreed or uh, the provisions of of um, of sites so this section talks about how the international coll collaboration should be carried out for uh, protecting this um, uh, wild flora and fauna when it comes to international trade and then prevention and detention of offenses certain penalties are uh, imposed certain punishments are imposed when uh, somebody hunts or uh, unlawfully possesses some animal articles and whatever uh, is recognized as offenses in this act and then uh, uh, for feature the important things which uh, in the, the important amendment of 2023 is regarding to the rationalization of schedules so earlier there, there were six schedules so schedule 1 2 3 Four, five, and six. So these five schedules, they were they were regarded for the uh, in respect to animals, and sixth schedule was uh, related to um, flora. But now the schedules are rationalized. Only four schedules are uh, mentioned here, and uh, <coughs> this fourth schedule was added for uh, uh, for listing of uh, sites species. the species which are protected under sites but not found in uh, schedules in of a uh, wildlife protection act so purely this is meant for the listing of the species of sites and schedule 1 and 2 are regarding to the protection of fauna so schedule 1 has higher level of protection and uh, schedule 2 is a little bit uh, rest, uh, you know relaxed level of protection and scheduled 3 is uh, synonymous to the schedule 6 that is the flora or the plants protected plants are listed here certain endangered protected plants are listed here and then uh, in this miscellaneous um, uh, here invasive alien species is also defined here 
uh, i think in uh, wildlife prohibition uh, wildlife protection act amendment of 2003 this while uh, invasive alien species are also uh, uh, regulation of uh, prohibition regulation or prohibition of import of these invasive alien species which cause uh, uh, which can which has potential to alter the ecosystem of uh, the, the nation the different uh, e ecosystems which, which has widespread impact so this is also dealt in this section uh, so with this basic understanding now let us uh, okay let us talk about this recent amendment also not only the rationalization of schedule but there were also certain other things which was uh, <coughs> which was also amended in this recent uh, amendment that is in 2002 and the amendment came to force in 2023 so here what has been done is um, along with the rationalization of this uh, schedules uh, there is a, 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 a constitution of one standing committee which has been mentioned in this section 6 6a this was added standing committee it is empowered uh, and uh, it it has been delegated the uh, duties of the state board for wildlife so, so certain duties of state board of wildlife was uh, uh, um, was uh, delegated to this board and then uh, section 43 section 43 of this act here uh, it it has been this particular section has been amended uh, where explicitly it, it, in this particular section it has been permitted to use uh, the use of elephants for religious or any other purposes and then um, there is a, a certain amendments which allow the central government to appoint a scientific authority to provide uh, guidance on matters relating to the impact of survival of certain species related to that to the trade so these are uh, and then uh, it has also empowered central government to regulate and stop the import and trade and possession of invasive alien species and or animal uh, alien species and then the penalties which were mentioned in the miscellaneous sections the penalties are also enhanced like for example in general for general violations it earlier it was only 25000 now it has been raised to one lakh and specially protected animals minimum fine has been enhanced so such kind of uh, amendments have been uh, done but uh, is it very rational or is it enough this amendments of 2023 uh, so uh, <coughs> if we critically analyze these amendments uh, certainly we we would um, uh, certainly we would uh, see some uh, objections which are raised by naturalists and conservationists so uh, when we talk about the positive side of the amendment it, it is somewhat beneficial to the local uh, communities uh, because of certain permitted activities for grazing and uh, protected land and all these things are mentioned here uh, and protection of endangered species so by expanding the list of schedule one that means many species are put into the schedule one and uh, men, uh, many species are uh, gaining attention by this uh, uh, amendment and it is uh, in line with the goal of increasing the forest cover that is national forest policy it aims to increase the forest cover up to the 33 percent of the land area so with this intention this um, <coughs> act was amended and by including the species which are listed in sites then we are um, following the norm of the international conventions. So this is one of the positive step. And, uh, 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 but when we see the criticism of the act, it says that this, um, in the, there is a tendency towards centralization of powers by creating this uh, certain committees and uh, uh, lessening the powers of state board, uh, uh, state board of wildlife. There is, some tendency of uh, centralization of powers and then uh, the main concern is the reduced power of state board of wildlife and then it is not uh, it this amendment specifically it has not the uh, not addressed the current issues of human wildlife conf conflict maybe and the eco sensitive zoo, zone rules when it comes to the 
I mean, uh, <coughs> conservation of species. These kind of things are not yet dealt. And then um, uh, further anal analysis of this, uh, if, if we see, uh, certainly they have rationalized this schedules, but rationalizing of schedule also has certain side effects. Like cert, uh, by uh, specifying certain animals in schedule one, that means these kind of animals are really uh, critically endangered. But by expanding this schedule, somewhere we are losing focus of certain animals. That means we are giving equal status to many uh, many fauna in this regard. For example, great Indian bustard. Uh, the number of great Indian bustards, it, it is less than 150 individuals in India. But it, it is placed with peafowl. Peafowl, it, it, it is considered, it, it, uh, there is numerous peafowls in India. And sometimes it is also considered as agricultural pests. So equal status of great Indian bustard and peafowl, it is uh, somewhat, it is, uh, uh, it raises the concern that somewhere the great Indian bustard should have more priority than uh, other species. And then similarly, jackals and bonner, uh, bonnet macaques, <coughs> they are uh, given the same status as uh, tigers or rhinoceros that is in the schedule one. And then there are certain other examples also, like uh, cer certain uh, birds like white, white bellied chola key and then palani laughing thrush. So these are uh, these are also placed in uh, uh, scheduled one, but uh, uh, placing only the rare and possibly endangered species in scheduled one should be the focus. And this act is somewhat it is uh, it it is not the positive. Uh, it doesn't uh, give any positive steps or the prescription. It is just describing even the IUCN uh, <coughs> IUCN. A red list. It just says that a certain species is critically endangered or endangered, and there is no specific uh, um, prescription to how to deal with this. How to deal with this? With uh, it, it is just a punitive. It just imposes penalties. That's all. How to go about the conservation of the species or that positiveness or the positive steps? It has not been mentioned uh, or that such kind of research has not been done in this regard. Those are the shortcomings of these acts. Okay. So with this basic understanding and critically analyzing the recent amendment, let's have a look into the previous year questions in this regard. So I want um, the aspirants to participate in this and uh, actively uh, answer, give answers to these questions when, whenever I'm reading the questions, okay? So the first question, genetic engineering appraisal committee is constituted under. Did we see in anything of genetic appraisal come constitute, uh, uh, Committee in Wildlife Protection Act? No, 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 no. Yes, this is under Environment Protection Act. So we should know what all it is present in Wildlife Protection Act. Can you name some committees or some uh, bodies which are under Wildlife Protection Act? Wildlife Crime Bureau is there. Wild, Wildlife Crime Bureau is there. National Board for Wildlife is there. National Tiger Conservation Authority is there. Yeah. Central Zoo Authority is there. <clears throat> Right. Yeah. And eco-sensitive zones, eco-sensitive zones are also not, they are not uh, part of this, uh, uh, they are not mentioned in Wildlife Protection Act, but they are, uh, they are mentioned as part of Environment Protection Act. And then this particular question was asked in uh, 2015. I have listed here because this Wildlife Protection Act is related, somewhat it is related to sites. Okay. So with respect to IUCN and sites. IUCN is an organ of United Nations and sites is an international ag agreement between governments. Is it right? IUCN is an NGO. It is not an organ of uh, United Nations. Okay. But okay. sites being international agreement between governments, that is the right statement. Okay. Uh, there are two statements here. One statement is wrong. IUCN runs thousands of field projects around the world to better manage natural environments. It is a general statement, right? We cannot say it is wrong. It runs thousands. It is a generally it is saying. It is a conservation-related NGO and it runs. This is obviously it is a right one. And sites is legally binding. Is it legally binding sites? 
anything with name convention c okay it is legally binding yes okay but this convention does not take place the national laws certainly it does not take place the national laws so any international laws when we say legally binding that means the nations are obligated to form their own national laws in this regards that's all oh, yeah. it doesn't mean that they will be punished for not uh, adhering but it obligates the nations to form their own national laws in this regards what is the national law which has been enacted uh, uh, with respect to sites it is Why wildlife not? production of Indi uh, protection act of 1970 so in 2017 this particular question was asked according to wildlife protection act of 1972 which of the following animals cannot be hunted by any person except under some provisions provided by law that means indirectly it is asking which of these animals are placed in schedule 1 or schedule 2 hmm. and all these incidentally all these animals are present in those schedules okay then similar question was asked uh, which of the if a species of tortoise is declared protected under schedule 1 of wildlife protection act what does it imply that means schedule 1 they are expecting you to know about schedule 1 so it enjoys okay. the same level of production of tiger yes that means tiger yes. is also a part of schedule 1 mm. then you may get a doubt like should we by heart all these uh, uh, things like which animal is in which schedule now it is not a problem when this particular question was asked there were six schedules six schedules one schedule is for the plants and should we by heart all the schedules but uh, i will tell you that um, i have listed i have listed uh, pyqs from 2011 which is related to fauna like for example in 2002 22 indian night jar spoon bill white ibis is mentioned okay and mm. uh, here uh, we see that here uh, ceylon frog mouth copper smith barbet grey chin minivet so i what i will do is i will share this uh, particular <coughs> a uh, compilation in the group in the in my channel and uh, uh, what you guys do is you just search this in wildlife protection act download pdf and uh, search for these animals like great indian bustard musk deer whether it is pre present in that schedule or not if it is present whether it is present in uh, schedule 1 2 or 4 now it is only four schedules four. out of which three schedules are for animals okay so like that you just uh, have a look into this okay if possible then learn about this iucn status also so if you are doing this uh, it could be somewhere it will be helpful for you okay so that is one thing and then uh, there was this question in uh, 2019 if a particular plant species is placed under schedule 6 of wildlife protection act what is the implication okay a says a license is required to cultivate that plant okay pause see, one uh, uh, just read about c and d it is a genetically modified crop plant such a plant is invasive and harmful to the ecosystem it, it certainly these things are not um, about the any schedule schedules doesn't deal with the invasive species or genetically modified crops right so it could be one of the two so if you read b such a plant cannot be cultivated under any circumstances this is an extreme, extreme statement it's like it cannot be cultivated in any circumstances extreme statement okay but a license is required to cult cultivate that plant the whole one whole section of uh, wildlife protection act deals with this okay a license is required to cultivate that plant we will have a look into this schedule also after this pyq okay we will have look into that in now itself because we are going through this see here um Uh, i i just want you to observe this this is a schedule 6 schedule 6 of wildlife protection act earlier that means before 2023 amendment mm. this was a schedule schedule 6 that means six six uh, plant species are pre protected here license has to be required to grow this okay one is the cycad cycad in the sense it is a gymnosperm which comes uh, in a plant category okay and then this vanda red vanda orchids they are all they are all kind of orchids and then uh, pitcher plant is there which is a insectivorous then somewhere kuth kuth is there only six species were protected under schedule 6 but now this 
schedule has been expanded so if you see in the in new um, amendment amendment this uh, sh schedule 3 has been placed in schedule schedule 6 species that is the flora has been placed in schedule 3 right we will just have a look into this uh, schedule <coughs> schedule 3 once see now there are 19 species here okay so i i would like to draw your attention to some of the species here see here uh, neel kurunji neel kurunji strabilanthus kuntiansis to kuntianus okay so this was recently it is in it was in current affairs it uh, it is a special kind of our endemic uh, flora of Western Ghats. Okay. Only in some parts of Western Ghats, this Neel Kurunji is found and it uh, um, it blossoms once in 12 years. And recently it was uh, blossomed in 2018. And in one of the uh, Independence Day speech also, uh, Prime Minister had mentioned about this species. So I think this is uh, worth reading. So have a look into this Neel Kurunji, just work before this prelims. Okay. And then uh, uh, this red vanda picture plant was already there. And then some daffodil orchids are uh, mentioned here. So just uh, read about this Neer Kurunji, which is one of the main pointers for the prelims. Or in one of the sessions or one of the video, I will also discuss about this. So now it is 19 species are uh, listed here. Just uh, I, I just wanted to draw your focus into this. Okay. Okay. Then let's continue about this uh, discussion. So among the following tiger reserves, which one has the largest area under tiger, critical tiger habitat? Okay. Why I have put this question? Because this critical tiger habitat is defined in Wildlife Protection Act. Critical tiger habitat is defined in Wildlife Protection Act. And there is a clear uh, core and buffer strategy for establishing tiger reserves right the core area is nothing but critical tiger habitat so if we see the uh, website of ntca uh, we will get an idea about uh, which tiger reserve has uh, how much core and all so here particularly this is the nagarjuna sagar sri shailam it is which has the big uh, largest area under the core or the critical tiger habitat okay and then uh, this particular question was asked in 2022 wildlife animal wild animals are sole property of the government is it no wildlife animals are properties of the government but sole property is somewhat it is the extreme thing sole property makes this statement wrong okay in wildlife protection act it says that wildlife wild animals and parts which are captured if somebody is smuggling the wild animals or some sandalwood and government has captured that sandalwood it becomes properties of government but other than certain those scenarios which are mentioned in Wildlife Protection Act, we cannot say that always sole property of government is an extreme statement that is wrong. Okay. When a wild animal is declared protected, such animal is entitled for equal protection, whether it is found in protected areas or outside. It makes sense, right? Wildlife, wild mm -hmm. animal, whether it is in protected area or you cannot shoot a tiger because it has come to your area. It, whether it is in a uh, forest or if, if it is in uh, some city, it is tiger is a tiger and it is protected irrespective of where it is. Okay. Apprehension of an um, uh, of protected wild animal becoming a danger to human life is sufficient ground for its capture or killing. Okay. Is it? Hmm? What do you feel? Apprehension is, uh, is enough to kill an animal? No. Mere apprehension is not enough, right? It has to be, it has it's, several conditions are there. If if uh, an animal has to be hunted, okay? If, if it is posing danger to human life, it is if it is disabled or diseased beyond recovery. And uh, one more, it is about the discretion of chief wildlife warden. He has to be satisfied that it cannot be tranquilized or translocation uh, is not possible. There is a movie called Sherni. Right. There, this kind of things are uh, shown in that movie. So, B is the answer here. And then, 
uh, once this was asked in 2023 once the central government notifies an area as community reserve the chief wildlife warden of the state becomes the governing authority of such forest mm -hmm. okay let us look into the next thing hunting is not allowed in such area okay not allowed it, it makes sense right it, it makes sense because uh, community reserve is meant for the conservation of uh, certain species or uh, certain area so hunting is not allowed it make it makes sense people of such area are allowed to uh, collect non timber forest produce allowed ntfp it is allowed it is also it is protected under forest rights act of 2006 so when they are allowed for uh, collecting non timber forest produce in uh, core forest why they are not allowed in communities it is allowed but certain activities like this traditional agriculture practice traditional agriculture practice specifically like jhum cultivation which is detrimental to the protection of that area which is um, detrimental to certain flora and fauna so those uh -huh. kind of activities are not allowed okay and then chief life, wildlife warden of state becomes the governing authority yes this is also right statement only three statements are uh, right this kind of question there is also an advantage if you just know that three statements if you just mark only three statement is right irrespective of whether in 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 my prelims what happened is when i am attending this uh, question i had a doubt with one and four i was certain that two and three are right but one and four what i thought is one might be wrong and four might be correct and i mark only three still i i got the right answer right oh, so yeah. without knowing the specific things also sometimes we will get but it is a matter of luck okay, okay. Uh, so this is about this and uh, uh, in karnataka in karnataka there is only one uh, community reserve okay uh, i just came up across this so i'm mentioning that, that is kokre bellur in uh, madhu district of karnataka and here they have mentioned shooting of birds or collection of egg in a village is strictly prohibited okay so in this uh, community reserve pelicans pelicans are conserved here the the uh, forest uh, department it incentivizes the villagers to conserve this pelicans that shooting so of birds this... any birds are protect only protected birds sir Shoot, shooting of birds itself because they are okay. very much attached to these birds and uh, shooting is not allowed here shooting of birds any birds okay. in that regard collection of <laughs> it is not that uh, community reserve means it is not specific to any uh, uh, species okay uh, in general that is a protected area hunting or shooting all the all such kind of activities are not allowed okay so in a uh, short uh, time uh, as much as possible the important point as about this wildlife protection act uh, i have tried to cover and if there is any uh, queries or doubts you can uh, ask it now hello hello ha huh, yes uh, yeah no no doubts here yeah.